Good morning. Tell you some stories. Many years ago, when I was around about 26 years old, a lady came up to me and prophesied that I will cast out demons, I will see the sick healed. And then I read in the scripture that says that in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Young men will see visions and dream, and old men will dream dreams. And then I read another scripture in John chapter 14, verse 12, <clears throat> that says, The works that I do, Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. And of course, much later, 10 years ago, the Lord dropped into my heart one word, kingdom. And so, these different things I heard, sometimes from a prophetic word, sometimes from something that the Lord dropped into my heart, sometimes from the scripture that I read, and one question remained, how are these things going to happen in my life? Recently, my wife was referring to another scripture, and I've preached on it many years ago, that says, and the Bible says, the Lord will bring you to a place whereby you will live in houses that you did not build, you would have vineyards that you did not grow, you will drink from wells that you did not dig. Can the Christian life be really so good? Can healing really take place? Can we really function in the prophetic realm and actually have dreams and visions that can see things in the spiritual realm that is beyond the natural? So I went into a process that I'm going to talk about today. And this particular process is called meditation. It can be construed as a simple thing because you kind of heard it before. And that's the thing I told you before. Many things we sort of heard before and we think we knew it. Thank you. You're a good boy. You should get a good wife. He is still single. Any takers? (laughs) So is my son too. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) The word meditation, uh, you know, is like a word you might have heard before, like many other things. And one of the things about Christianity and the culture that we have is very often we talk about things that we kind of have heard before, we kind of know, and like I told you before, kind of know, it's still a yard away or still a gap away from the reality that you're really experiencing it because the real thing needs to be experienced. I'll lead you into another story. This particular young lady has just finished her course and had been through her internship in hospital, and so now she works for the first time in her life full-time in the hospital. And um, suddenly she realized that working life sometimes is really not that nice. The people, the staff, the fellow staff, and the workload and the distribution of workload equal or unequal, and so on. So she comes back with a lot of things to talk about and not very happy on some days. And uh, so I was just figuring out how to respond to her. And so in the next conversation that we had, I began to deal with her on some of these things that I'm talking about. 
Because Christian meditation is about thinking about something that is going to stretch you upstream a little bit, downstream a little bit, wider a little bit, and not just be locked in to just one thought. Because meditating, a Christian meditating, sorry, let me say this again. Christian meditation, it's about meditating on the Word of God, the Bible. And it's about trying to make sense of it, trying to understand it, and trying to see the reality of it. And it applies to everyone. Doesn't matter whether you are 15 years old or you're 50 years old. Doesn't matter whether you're only a young person or older person. It will do well if you learn how to meditate on God's Word. And it's another, it's just, it can be just another word to some of us. But the Bible promises certain things about meditation. So let's turn to this particular scripture here in, John, in Joshua chapter 1. <clears throat> I don't know what happened to my voice. It used to be better before. Joshua chapter 1. <clears throat> here we have God speaking to Joshua. Joshua was placed into a, in a position where he had to take over from Moses, the great and mighty man that crossed the Red Sea with a whole bunch of fellows for three million of them on dry ground when, the, when it was really, uh, you know, it's just impossible for them to have done that without a miracle of God. Just bear in mind that Joshua was the second person in the whole of biblical history that did a similar miracle of actually leading the whole of the Israelite nation to cross the River Jordan at high tide. The only two people who have done that. And Moses was told to us that he could write the first five books of the Bible. That means he, could have, he would have a lot, a lot of the Word of God stored in him. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and now Joshua is going to start his journey to lead this, these people into the promised land. And he was most likely in fear and trepidation because he wondered if he could foot the bill. Uh, having seen his... Sifu, you know, his guru uh, did what that did all that he did, and the power that went through him and went with him and went before him when he was serving God. He won He probably would have wondered whether or not I can, I can, I can foot the bill. And right at this point in time, God spoke this word to him, and I believe that this is going to be of benefit to you individually today because it will determine your ability to enter into life from here on with that sense of success and prosperity because of the way that you would meditate on God's Word. Okay, let's read from verse 6, Joshua chapter 1. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to your forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Repeated several times. That means it's likely that he was not very strong and not very courageous at that point in time for God to, have to, for God to repeat to him. Okay? And um, so verse 7, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you are or wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
So the promise that God gave to Joshua was that if you would meditate his word day and night, God says, I'll be with you and I'll help you to become successful in that which is assigned to you in your assignment. Every one of us has an assignment in life. And our assignment in life will be much more meaningful if we understand that our assignment is not just only earthly, but connected to the spiritual realm, connected to God. And it is when you are able to see that, you will probably be able to look at life from another angle that you might not have seen before, because prior to be, being a Christian, you'll probably be seeing life all just only upon yourself and upon whatever that is horizontal, laterally around you. But suddenly, when you begin to consider God in your life, your, your, your whole thought process is actually lifted to another level. It's lifted with other considerations to know that actually your life is more than yourself. Your life is actually connected to another person who is higher than you, and he has another system higher than yours. And when you're hooked on to his system, it is likely that you could be raised up higher even to a more meaningful life, to be a more purposeful life, and maybe even more powerful life, and maybe even more successful life, particularly not just only success in terms of making money, but not just only success in terms of whatever material things that we can have, but successful also relationally. Because in this world today, relationships are actually very much under attack in different ways. <coughs> Children and parents and marriages and so on. And um, very confusing. There's a lot of confusion in the world today regarding uh, gender, regarding uh, marriage, non-marriage, and this and that and everything else. But hooked on to a higher system, it is likely that you will be lifted up. Meditation is something that I can see that has some qualities about them, and those qualities are relating to not just only a mental process, but it has a capacity to actually lift a person up. It has some uh, spiritual connotation to it. So meditation is not just only a Christian thing, it is uh, done by others as well. You've got Eastern meditation, you've got Buddhist meditation, you've got mantra, you've got all sorts of other meditation. And uh, Silver Mind Control many years ago, they have all uh, this kind of thing that consider that, that helps people. Some parts of it is positive in helping people to have positive thinking and so on. But other parts of it, there are spiritual implications to it. So they are not everything as what is seen. Actually, many things are more than what you see. There is an unseen that becomes seen, and what you see has an unseen behind it. I was with a <clears throat> group of people the week before, and we were talking about how politicians in certain places, before a general election, they will be inviting Tibetan monks to come, uh, to go to that particular nation, and uh, or the cabinet and uh, whoever will be the political figures and the political leaders and the party leaders will be in consultation with these people. And then another group will be in consultation with another fellow that they would invite to come from Indonesia. So you think it's just only a political process, but the process that we see in the natural has behind it a lot of spiritual things that the average Rakyat doesn't know. But it just goes to show that whatever that we do actually does have spiritual link, spiritual uh, connections, and it will do well for us to link to the living God in Jesus' name. How many say amen? At least I know that the Holy Spirit that is described by His own name is holy, and His Spirit, so Holy Spirit. And I know, and everybody knows, even before we became a Christian, we know that these fellows who are called Christians, they are okay. And even we have got people who might not want to go to church themselves, but it's all right to send their children to Sunday school. How many understand what I'm saying? Somehow, there's that kind of instinct. I don't know why we think like that, but yeah, we, we, before my mother became a Christian, she just loves Christmas. She just loves listening to the carols. And... Um, 
every Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, she would turn on the radio and, and begin to listen and get herself engrossed in, in the, the carols that, that they sang. This particular scripture here, I'm going to go back to the stories that I told you before about the issue of doing the works that Jesus did, about end times, Jesus, God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, old men see, young men see visions, old men dream dreams, and, and so on. And then there was the other scripture about casting out demons. And I wondered how to do it because I've never seen it. When these things were spoken to me and told to me, I have never seen anybody casting out demons in front of me. I told you I was only 26 years old. That was only just a few years back, by the way. <laughs> and um, I, I just was curious. But that's the thing that got me thinking. I started this whole process of meditating on how this thing works. And of course, up to last, last week, I was still using it to apply to this young lady that was having a bit of a distressful time working for the first time in her life, teaching her how to think things from a bigger picture, thinking things through, upstream, downstream a little bit, and, and begin to be, allay her in her anxiety and her emotional stress. I'd like you to turn to another scripture here in Psalm 1. I'd like to read the first three verses. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. Now, all these are negative. Negative input, walk in the counsel of the ungodly, the wicked. Stand in the way of sinners, sit in the seat of mockers. People who are mocking, people who are wicked and so on. That is, you see, your meditation is going to be affected by what you, by what you put in. So if you're in the midst of these people who are always swearing about God, always using the name of Jesus in a, in a swearing way or a cursed way and so on, you just carry on with that, you will no, most likely be unable, you will most, unli most unlikely be able to meditate in a way that will bring the success and the prosperity that God promises. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by, by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf, leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. So, okay, if you are not involved in receiving things that we would meditate on negatively, on the contrary, if you delight in the law of God, in the law of the Lord, the word of God, meditating upon it day and night, you will be like a tree planted by rivers or streams of water which yields its fruit in season whose leaf does not wither and whatever he does prospers. Another scripture is Psalm 9, Psalm 9 or 19. Um, Psalm 19. Verse 14, thank you. <clears throat> May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is King David talking. King David was obviously not a perfect man, but he became one of the, he was the greatest king in the whole of the history of Israel. And what had happened was, despite whatever, uh, the Lord used him to be in the lineage that actually led to the, 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 the arrival of Jesus Christ in that particular line of uh, generations, genealogy. These people know how to meditate. And so I went meditating on what does it mean to do the works that Jesus did. What I saw in the life of Jesus in the Bible was he healed a lot of people. He cast demons out. He brought the kingdom of God on earth. He was supernatural in many ways. 
He had blessed people who are business people, tax collectors, Zacchaeus. He had blessed people who are very poor, and he was able to actually bring about good news to people. The point is, just hearing the Bible, just hearing people talk about God, just hearing a message is not good enough. And I'm afraid sometimes we have developed a culture of just hearing sermons. So after Sunday, we wait for another Sunday and hear another one. And then it's already an effort to even get people to come to church sometimes. But that's only just only the kindergarten stage. They don't know that we miss out on not only coming to church just for the sake of coming to church. Actually, this thing is going to help you, man. It may help you in your marriage. It may help you in your business. It may help you with your children. It may help you for many, 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 many things to come. Because somewhere along the line, you're going to be in need of God coming through for you in circumstances, in situations whereby you yourself cannot solve the problem. Because human beings, whether you like it or not, we are limited. And somewhere along the line, in the mercy of God, He will create opportunities for us to come and reconnect with Him and actually return to His side through the Lord Jesus Christ, having Jesus to settle issues that block us, hinder us, and most of it is due to things that you might not even have been involved in, but passed down from generations right from Adam. The issues of sin might not actually start with you. I know you're not perfect, I'm not perfect, and so on. So nobody is perfect. But actually the issue that separated us from God is not you or me. It's actually started right from Garden of Eden. And God sent Jesus as the second, the last Adam the second man to be able to fix up that particular breach, that gap, so that we can reconnect with God by Him being our Savior and our God. And so that we can actually have a new beginning, a new beginning whereby His Word, His Word can actually function and be realities for us that will lead us into another dimension of life that is pertaining to the spiritual and the supernatural. Now, some of us might have to hear this many, many times in order to get into it because we could be pretty, you know, okay without it. But God wants to bring us into certain realities with Him that will actually make our life complete because our life indeed is spirit, soul, and body. Whether we know it or not, we actually function in different systems, and there are five systems that we are involved in. The first system is your emotional system. Your emotional system knows how to discern love or, or hate. Your emotional system knows how to discern anxiety, and sometimes you get caught, caught up in it, and it goes down to a, 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 a downward spiral, and some people actually land it in depression. A second system is your mental system. Your mental system helps you to sometimes correct the difficulties that you are caught up in in your emotional system. When people does not have the ability in the mental system to help balance up the emotional system, they end up in depression and sometimes they lose hope. And looks like this particular issue is not only for people of a certain level of education, you can be actually highly educated and actually be in depression. Don't know how it happens, but it does happen. So it's, you know, these things are not just only a matter of how you can work it out by your mind because right now I'm dealing with a certain person, she is very highly educated and she has had her specialist degrees and she is making a lot of money in many ways but she is depressed and she is suicidal. Not an old person, young person with two young kids or three young kids. What's going on? Good husband. 
So there's no uh, real issues about the marriage. But there are issues that she can't sort out with her within her mind, even though she is a very clever lady. So therefore, sometimes I think, I think we better not be so sure about ourselves. And better still, don't be cocky. Don't be too arrogant about ourselves. Because sometimes we just don't know when we would need God. How many can say amen to that? Just a soft one will do. Emotional system, mental system. This mental system will be delay, dealing with what I'm talking about today, about the system of thought, system of the rational, R rational, being rational. And uh, it has its benefits. We read a book as a required text because of a course that we do. And this man talks about how, the, how is the brain wired. A certain parts of the brain enables you to be able to uh, be alerted to dangers and so on. And he was talking about this particular part of the brain called the amygdala that is supposed to be protective. So we've got doctors here, you know. Um, and it's supposed to be for your self-preservation. It's an instinct. But however, if this thing is uncontrolled, it can just drive you in great anxiety and, like I said, depression. Then it says that you need to actually activate another part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex. The cortex. You, got, you guys got to tell me whether he's right or wrong. I can't tell. And I'm not trying to be smart either. I'm just quoting what the man was saying, what the writer said. And that part is the thoughtful part of you and being able to think. And I think meditation appeals to that part of the brain whereby you don't just allow your emotions to go haywire, but actually allow yourself to be able to bring balance with some measure of thoughtfulness besides just only letting your emotions run wild. Because it's to your disadvantage and sometimes you say things you regret Sometimes you do things you regret because your emotions actually had been let off. And, um, yeah. And of course, the third system that I'm... Um, well, the, the emotion and the, 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 the mental is the soul part. The third system is your spiritual system. There is a spiritual system. Whether you like it or not, they're all linked up. And so we have this situation whereby you can be involved in certain meditation, whatever brand you call it, somewhere along the line, it will land up in spiritual things. As innocent as they are, sometimes it may be meditation, sometimes it may be some form of exercises that you do, and they are quite, quite innocent in in, 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 the, in the front of it, but later on as you go deeper and deeper, deeper in it, uh, you will begin to experience this, the, the spiritual part of it. Many years ago, I had a guy who is on full-time staff with us in the church, and he, before he became a Christian, he was involved in certain mind thing, uh, mind control thing. And uh, when he got deeper and deeper, he was invited to another level, to another room. And in that room, he, for whatever reason, there was things that he saw that entered into his, his, uh, his uh, what do you call it, his uh, classmate. He scared the, scared the, the, the whatever out of him. And um, he became a Christian then. Suddenly he realized that the spiritual realm is for real. But you wouldn't be told all that until you get deeper into it. So is Christian meditation that is going to link you up with the Spirit of God. There's a spiritual system involved. And this spiritual system is the system that is going to cause you to connect with God, involve the Holy Spirit. So your meditation can be powerful because it's connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an anointing about the Word of God. The Word of God has a life of its own. 
I told you I was meditating on John 14, 12. The things that Jesus did, we shall do also. Cast out demons, heal the sick. I've been meditating. I was meditating those. I didn't know how this works. How do you cast devils and demons out of people? Does it work all the time? And he says, the Psalm 19, verse 14, he says, The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Same thing, Joshua. He says, Let this word not depart from your mouth, but meditate it day and night. There's a connection between your words and your heart. In between, it's called meditation. And as I progress in learning about thinking about these things, to think the long of it, short of it, wide width of it, depth of it, <laughs> Think, 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 thinking all different, think, uh, different issues. Then somewhere along the line, the Lord brought some realities. I was in Cambodia one year, up north in Batombong. And uh, the war had just ended, but at night it was a curfew and they were still having, I, I, I could still hear shots being fired and I don't know whether they're fired or, or firecrackers or whatever, I don't know. But uh, anyway, it was in that particular situation that I had a dream. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Young men see visions, old men dream dreams. I was the exception, I was young men and still dream dreams, all right? <laughs> and I dreamt about somebody in our church. I wouldn't tell you the name, otherwise you, you, you know who he is or she is. And I dreamt about a family. And in the dream, I saw something quite vivid about something that happened to them about 15 years ago, 15 years before that time. And in the dream, I uh, figured that uh, the wife actually is suffering from a condition in the womb. And so I came back waited for an opportunity. I don't know how many weeks I waited until one day I happened to be in the cell group and um, when everybody left and they were hosting the cell group, I stayed back and asked them, 15 years ago did this thing happen? They say, yes, but pastor, how did you know? I said, I really didn't know. The Bible had talked about we can dream, dream dreams and I dream. And then the Lord told me about this. So it came as a dream. It's not because I fasted or because I was so, this, so spiritual. I just had a dream. And I just want to check with you whether this dream means anything to you. And so, he said, yeah, this thing happened. Then I said, next thing, do you have a problem in your womb? Do you have a problem in your lower abdomen? He says, yeah, but it's quite embarrassing because I have a prolapse, a condition called prolapse. And... Uh, I used to be very active, this lady said. I played tennis, I jogged, I played this and that and everything else. But I've not been able to do that because I can't walk around just a block of shops without uh, uh, being embarrassed by it. So I'm an adult pampas. So I said, well, well let's, let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. I'm thinking about this thing because the Lord told me that we are supposed to be able to experience this from, for reality, for real, and because if we are connected to the third system, the spiritual system, we should be able to experience these things for real. So I said, since it's now halfway real, the, the facts are real. You can identify with the facts. The next thing for real is maybe the Lord wants to heal you because that's what all, all these things are about. It's the love of God, it's the goodness of God, it's the favor of God, it's the kindness of God. So let us pray. But before we pray, tell me how you would like to pray. Then they told me what they need to pray regarding the situation about 15 years ago. So we pray, all right. I don't want to go into details. And I led them into prayer and after that I begin to pray over the condition that she had. But three weeks later, she came back to church asked for permission to come up to the podium and testify. And she testified that when I prayed for her, and she never told me what happened, only up there, three weeks later, up here, up in the, in the stage, she said that when Pastor Jeremiah prayed for me, I felt a pair of hands went into my body and knitted my muscles together. I thought, wow, and you didn't tell me all that. 
That was very dramatic. <laughs> and I had spent three weeks doing those things that I have never done, not done for so many years due to this condition. And now I'm satisfied that the Lord Jesus had healed me. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? Give the Lord the glory. It's okay. No surgery, no nothing. Can you believe it? I think we better learn how to believe some things, okay? Because I, how many still believe that God is still in the supernatural? He can. And maybe sometimes we need it. Why am I telling you this morning? It's because I have such a desire that you will be in the place, in a place whereby the Lord can raise you up in His kingdom life to be powerful in prayer and powerful in your faith. Amen? And applicable even today for your children, for your family, for your marriage, for your business, for your home, for your traveling, and for whatever that your hands find to do. Then I was thinking about how does this thing work about casting out demons? I thought, and I thought. I looked at the scriptures, I read the scriptures. I read the accounts in the scriptures when Jesus cast out demons. And then, after a period of thinking and reading the scriptures and meditating upon them, I got connected to the spiritual system of the Holy Spirit. At that time, the church was still in Damansara Utama. But there was such a spate of people coming to be prayed for. The first one was a lady that was actually meeting up with one of our ladies. Her name was Maureen at, this time, at that time, and she was full-time, and, and uh, she's now become a missionary in East Malaysia somewhere now for some years. Um, I was not involved in the counselling. I just passed by. I just passed by. I was on, on the way to the toilet. Something, a thought came into my mind. Religious spirit. Where does that come from? Long story short, I uh, pulled Maureen aside and told her that this lady that you're dealing with, I think the Lord wants to release her from something that had bound her for a long time. She might be a Christian for a long time, but rather than enjoying her freedom in Christ, she actually has a religious spirit. Maybe you should just deal with it and cast it out of her. I myself haven't done, done it myself. I asked her to do it. But that's because I, 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 she's a stranger to me. It's not nice for me to come and say, you've got a, a sp spirit of this and that, you know. And, but Maureen was quite smart. She has a way to talk, talk, talk. Finally, she brought her back to me to deal with it. <laughs> so I said lovingly that Jesus wants to set us free. And long story short, broke the thing, cast it out. She's a changed lady. Of course, many more. Uh, about two weeks ago, or what, yeah, I was actually preaching in our Puchong Chinese church. And um, Pastor Wing Chong was telling me about this thing, about how he brought in a young man. Her name was Kok Wai. His name was Kok Wai. And... Uh, God, why had a certain condition? And when I prayed for him, that fellow began to crawl around, roll around on the floor like a snake. That's not, not, that's not normal, right? And then when I began to talk to, her, to him about Jesus, he poked his finger into his ear, both. And it was going in and in and in. And then Wing Chong was afraid. Pastor Wing Chong. Wing Chong is a pastor in our Puchong church. He was afraid that it will, this thing is going to damage his eardrum. So he tried to drag this, this finger out. And he was trying to pull it out, but it just wouldn't budge. That fellow was so strong in keeping it out. And then he told me that, Pastor Jeremiah, he said, Pastor, you know what you did? You said, stop. 
trying to pull his hand out of his finger out of his ear. All I did was just looked at him, commanded the demon to let him go, and he said like there was another force that was pulling out his finger out, pulling his finger out of his ear. He said that was so cool. When I heard that, I thought that was pretty cool too. <laughs> another force was actually pulling his finger. Is it okay for me to tell you these kind of stories or is it too creepy? <laughs> but I want to tell you there's a reality in the third system, the system of the spirit. And of course, a few years ago, we were in China. And on the, on the verge of flying off, they drove us to somebody's home. And that, 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 that man is actually an elder of the church. And his wife was bedridden for four months because there was a spinal issue. Or rather, surgery was done on the, sp on the spine and it didn't go well. And so she was bedridden and she had a tumor in the brain. And she was not good. She was all bloated up. And uh, they asked us to pray for her. And then again, the Lord spoke to me, deal with this particular spirit. And that church is a very conservative church, you, you know, and we've got no time to explain too many things. So the safe thing for both of us to do is we discussed, let's pray in English because they don't understand. <laughs> then we don't have to explain too many things. So in English, I took authority over that particular demon and cast it out of her. And in that year, strange enough, I seldom go back to the same place in the same year. I went back to that place four months later. And um, they told me that... So I asked about this lady, what happened to her? Oh, he said, they told me, Pastor, you, you don't know. After you left, she actually got out of bed and was able to walk. Now she's been cycling from house to house playing mahjong. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thought that's pretty cool also. Amen. <laughs> yeah, give the Lord the glory. Amen. So I said, what happened to the brain tumor? He says, don't worry about it. No more pain, don't want to see doctor anymore. So she just carried on and lived. Praise the Lord. I was looking for Mrs. Wong today. Where is she? She didn't come for the first service, didn't come for the second service. Is she all right? Mission trip. On mission trip. Bless her. How old do you think Mrs. Wong is? Hmm? Ladies, very sensitive. Huh? I shouldn't even ask. How long has she been in church now? Ron, do you think? 10 years? 13 years? More than that. Datin already had been in church for 13 years. So she was probably earlier than that. And so, oh yeah, Datin also not around. Mission trip? Oh, huh? Not well. Okay, but anyway, this one is pancreatic cancer, Mrs. Wong. Fourth stage. Son is a specialist. To do that, apparently, she needs to either go to America and it will need one million US dollars to do that, or the alternative is to do uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know, internet, whatever, uh, US surgeon. Singaporean surgeon, there will be a lot of things involved. But just by one word of knowledge, by our cell leader's wife, when invited to... Oh, Dr. Liu would know. You know the story, don't you? You were in the cell group. Yeah. But just one word of knowledge, when they prayed for her, healed until today. All gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you one thing. I'm convinced that our God is not only spiritual, but He's capable of the supernatural. And I think sometimes we may need it. Hallelujah. Do I get it right all the time? No. But what do I have to do? I think I've got to keep on learning how to meditate the Word of God day and night. That was the beginning of all these things that connected me into the third system called the spiritual system. Because the third system, once it's right, it will connect me into the realities and the manifestation in the fourth system called the bodily system, the physical system. Because when Mrs. Wong got healed, she was physically healed. Okay? 
So the physical system is the fourth one, and of course the last kingdom, last system is the system called the kingdom life system. The kingdom life system is so that we can actually be natural as our human beings as we are, but yet at the same time longing and yearning and even experiencing measures of the supernatural, even though natural. Hallelujah. And you know what is the base of it? Meditating on the Word of God. Meditating, it's 12.30, yeah? Three more minutes to go. That clock says I'm over. Hallelujah. Okay, last sentence, last thing. Meditating. You see, I actually had slides and I decided to do away with the slides, just tell you stories. Meditating is that part of you, that part of your, your being, that part of your mind that helps you to deal with things in a more reflective way rather than in a reflexive way. Reflexive means automatic, your reflex muscles, huh? reflex. And that's what your emotions are capable of doing. Suddenly you blew your top. Suddenly you're this. Suddenly you you're lose your, your fuse. Reflexive. And sometimes you can't even control yourself. Or reactive is another way. But meditation brings you into a more reflective mode that will cause you to think the length and the breadth of things, the depth and the height of things, the before and the after, and also the upstream and the downstream so that you will actually have these things in control. Kingdom life system is the system that says, if you seek first the kingdom of God, and how do you seek first the kingdom of God? You seek first the kingdom of God by doing exactly what Jesus tells you right at the very beginning when he came and started his first sermon. His first sermon, the first sentence of his sermon was, Change your mind. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Change your mindset. Change your thinking pattern. pattern. And then, and then of course Paul picked it up in Romans chapter 12. He says, if you will renew your mind, you'll be transformed. You'll be changed. How many people want somebody else to change? How many people hope that something will happen and then it will change? How many people think that, you know, you, you, you just get uh, closer and be more friendly and then, then that guy will change? And then some, how many people are also dis disappointed? You don't change so easily because everybody has a history. And when you want to change, if God doesn't change you, sometimes you can't even change yourself. So what does it mean? It does mean that you, if you activate your mind in the system that Jesus talks about in his kingdom, change your mindset according to the word of God, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and seek the kingdom first. Then he says, I'll open up the doors for you. All these things will be added to you. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, It can be as simple as just starting the journey of praying and ask the Lord, help me to change my mindset. Help me with my way of thinking. To be away from what I've been used to now to the way of the living God in the Bible. It can be as lengthy in process as having to read a lot more of the Bible. Prayer, read. It can be, the third thing, as important as trying to think through what the Bible says regarding a topic. That means you need a focus. What are you thinking about? What is God talking to you about? What is He wanting to show you about? What is your need right now? If your need is in the area of a healing, if your need is in the area of a whatever it is, focus on that need and begin to check with the Bible and start reading it and discover what the Bible has to say and start thinking through. 
And if necessary, memorize certain parts of it so that you can actually think it through easily. I don't memorize scriptures just for the sake of it. The reason why I can recite scriptures and memorize them is because these are the scriptures that I've been thinking about. And that's why I commit them to memory for the sake of, of every part of that particular scripture, the words of the scripture, the, the words in the verse. And I needed those words, so I memorized it. So you memorize it for a higher level, higher, higher, not for the sake of it, but for a higher aim to meditate and to think the up and down and sideways and so on, so that you can actually see how He will connect you. It, you know, this thing is very real. The Word of God is never divorced from the Holy Spirit. When you somehow start working with the Word of God, you would somehow invite the Holy Spirit to work with you. I thought that was very interesting because that's the way it was. When I was thinking about casting out demons, soon enough, these fellows appear on my doorstep and I was able to see how it works. And then about healing, I saw how it works. And there was this and that, everything else that I experienced over these years now. So I'm not talking to you today out of a Bible study that I've just read somewhere. I didn't preach to you this morning out of a vacuum. Forty-something years of living with Jesus Christ and walking with Him, telling you today that this idea of meditation can bring you goodness and wellness to the glory of Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Ron.